We have traveled all over Kenya and East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and become profitable farmers. We will see how farmers across the region can learn from experts and from each other in every way. Join us and our experts on this journey and share their family's experiences as they make these changes. <coughs> Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We are in eastern Uganda in Busoga region. At a village called Nabugalue in the Ganga district where the heavens have opened up, there is lots of rain. Most of the people here are subsistence farmers. And we at Shepa Shepa are here to help them move to the next level. So join us in this adventure. We meet Paul Musenero and his wife Robina. Paul and his family have recently moved to this farm and are working hard to have it up and running. A new home always comes with new challenges and we've come to see if we can help them. So the tent goes up and we get down to business. Shamba Shepa! Hey, Robina and Paul, thank you so much for welcoming us to your Shamba. We are very grateful and as you can see it's raining so I, it's a blessing. Yeah, it's a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> Robina, I can see you even have your own umbrella. <laughs> Uh, let me start by asking Paul, uh, how long have you lived here? We have lived here for, it's coming to two years and a half. Mm -hmm. yeah, because we were living somewhere but we had to make a home. Mm -hmm. So now we are trying to make a home. Oh, so you're trying to make a home? Yep. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So how big is your farm? My farm is two and a half acres. Do you do farming as well? I help him as a farm manager. Oh, you are the manager? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so Paul, what are you growing here? No, I'm growing bananas. I'm growing citrus and maize. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are they doing well? Mm, they are doing well on that with maize. This weed called the striker is affecting the maize and the, maybe with your help we shall shape up. <laughs> <laughs> Robina. I plant maize, potatoes, cassava, beans and soya beans. Do you have cows? I have cows mm -hmm. which are five and two calves but my plan is to sell off all those cows and I get one milking cow so that I put it in the zero grazing and I get the milk. <laughs> and I can hear chickens. Oh chickens I have scavenging birds. Mm -hmm. At night they are host but uh, during the day I release them and they eat mm -hmm. and uh, you, you get good money mm -hmm. and good feeding, nutrition. Mainly the challenge is uh, vaccination. You know you can't keep birds without vaccinating. Yes. But uh, vaccination, you know, vaccine is very far. And sometimes when you can afford to bring the vaccine, you can't vaccinate even your neighbors. So uh -huh. chicken get on and almost you have done nothing when you vaccinate on yours. Uh -huh. Yeah. The disease keeps mm. spreading. Spreading. Uh -huh. Let me ask, have you ever had your soil tested? No. 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 And I think we should do that at some we, point. We will do that. Yes. We will do that. First thing to do on any farm, as you know, is to do a soil test. This will tell you what crops you can grow and what fertilizers to use. Insert the auger straight in the soil, about 20 centimeters deep. Turn the auger several times to cut out the soil, then pull it out carefully. Mix all the soil together and put it in a bag, with a label showing your name, address, location, and the crop you want to grow. Soil Care has mobile labs where they can analyze the soil and give you a result in two hours. Timothy, that was quick. Two yeah. hours and we have the results. Yes. Read them to us. Yeah, for Paul Mustereno, your soil pH is 4.9. 4.9. So that is too low for bananas. You will need to, to add agricultural lime in your field. Then coming to your soil fertility, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and other micronutrients. Yeah, for nitrogen is low again. 
Phosphorus is low and potassium is low. So which means you are going to use fertilizer. At planting, you shall use DAP mm. fertilizer mm. with a mixture of uh, muriate of potash. And then at top dressing after eight weeks, mm. you'll again use DAP for top dressing and muriate of potash. Uh, finally, because they are bananas, they need second top dressing. Mm. You'll again use double DAP plus muriate of potash. The organic matter in your soil, you'll need to improve on that by adding a lot of compost in your field. It is very long. Finally, the alternative crop that you can grow in your soil. Yep. Tubers, for example, cassava, sweet potatoes, Irish potatoes. Always use compost sufficiently in your farm to keep your soil alive. And plant resistant varieties in your farm. Paul has 70 local chickens and regularly vaccinates them. But they still get diseases from neighboring birds and he wanted to know what to do. We asked the experts to visit us to give us the right advice about vaccinating chickens. Paul, you have had some problems with your chickens, some challenges, especially when it comes to vaccination. I've got some experts for you today. Would you explain to them what challenges you are facing? My challenge here, I'm a farmer with local poultry. Sometimes I go for quarters, but the challenge is vaccination. You know, these are scavenging birds. You vaccinate yours, but your neighbor will not vaccinate. So almost you have done nothing. So that's the best challenge. And the, in fact, when you tell them, maybe you source funds and you get together, you buy vaccines, they say, ah, first we have been wearing this chicken for years and years and we have not been vaccinating. So that's the major challenge I have. So Florence, what should the farmer do? We have a disease which really disturbs our birds, our local birds in the villages and in the country at large, and that is normally it's called Newcastle disease. Um, if you don't vaccinate your birds, you'll see that your birds will all these, their periods actually twice a year almost. During when it's very dry or when the rains have just started, yep. you see all the birds in the villages uh, dying. Mm. It doesn't affect only the young ones, but also the mature ones. You'll see all of them going down, they will have the area white green. You'll see all of them wearing coats. We actually say wearing coats. <laughs> As if you poured water on them and um, all the birds start dying. What are yeah. other visible symptoms of the Newcastle disease? Of Newcastle disease. Um, other than them having uh, that diarrhea, that white and green diarrhea, you see the coats, as I'd said. They, of course, they are off feeds. They won't eat. They won't be able to feed. Um, and of course, they just start dying. Most, that's the biggest uh, symptom which really makes a farmer feel there is a problem I should look for, mm -hmm. for, for, for vaccine. I mean, the whole village, when it starts, you just hear from the neighbors, mine have died, and the other one says, mine have died, then you just know, you know, you are now in a, a population, what, a uh, loss of birds. Uh, so you have to go to uh, shops and look for, to veterinary shops, and look for the doctors so that they can help you with the vaccine and you vaccinate your birds. If you don't vaccinate them, they will all die. And yet, if you have these birds and a visitor comes, be sure you will have something to give a visitor. If you have the birds and um, you know a child is sent away from school, you'll, you'll just sell one bird and get school fees. And not only that, the, the nutrition part of it, you need to eat some eggs. The children need to eat eggs to grow well. You need to, um, to, to you, you can exchange these birds for goats and you know, you, you increase on your, on your wealth in, in the homes. So it is very important to vaccinate birds. What vaccine is this? Uh, this vaccine, we call it Kukusta. It is easier to handle by the farmer. It may not require a vet to travel distances in the villages to go and vaccinate. What a farmer needs to do is to have a dropper like this, which contains 25 doses, and she moves or he moves to his home. When he arrives tired, he's free to put it on the table until the following day and he vaccinates or she vaccinates. This one, you can vaccinate all age groups from day old to adults with no problem. George, when does a farmer vaccinate? Uh, what is the schedule of vaccination like? We are talking now about a free-range farmer. 
a village farmer like my colleague here. He should vaccinate all his flock about three or four times a year. Is this something that a farmer can easily do or does he need a technical assistance? All farmers should be trained to vaccinate. You hold this dropper up vertically and you, draw, you have a drop on the eye. That's all. Oh, that's all. And the chicken will blink to show you that it has had it. <laughs> and that's it. Finally, what about the neighbor's chickens? Ideally, if you vaccinate your birds yeah. regularly, mm. your neighbor's condition of, of the disease will not affect you. Ah. So don't worry about that. Mm. The only problem with your neighbors not vaccinating is that socially they will pull you down. Why? Because when it comes to marketing, you can't market as an individual. When a trader comes from town and the trader knows that the birds in that community are vaccinated, he will pay a higher premium for your birds. Because even those, those birds will be protected all through the journey up to the main towns. If a trader buys birds from villages which don't vaccinate, by the time he reaches the main towns, some of them are already dead. In the past, Paul has had problems with Striga in his maze, and that meant his yields were very low. Uh, Frank, you've had a look at the maze. Uh, so what did you see? I saw quite a number of uh, negative issues, which I would wish to point out. Mm -hmm. One of them is the plant population is too high. There are quite a number of stem borers. The maze is stunted. There is Striga weed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For where is the Striga? I don't see it. This Striga is right here, yeah. just close to the maze. You oh, see this? Striga? This is Striga, although always, it's still young. Yeah, we've always seen it with flowers. You this have is still flowers. young, and you can see it's very healthy. Oh, really? Yeah, it comes out once the maze starts growing. Mm -hmm. So eventually it will go through all the stages of growth until it will flower. But this is a Striga. So at this point it's still destructive? Very destructive. It oh, is sucking okay. all the nutrients from the maize plant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like what Paul said, he, he sprayed with, what did you spray with? Glyphosate. Yeah, did he do the right thing? I can say yes, but I can also say no. Initially, before you plant the maize, you can use glyphosate. Mm. By then, Striga is quite resistant. That's why we have uh, a chemical called Imizapa. Yeah, this chemical has already been put on the maize, and the maize is referred to as the IR maize. Mm -hmm. Locally here, we call it Kayongogo. Uh -huh. So you are better off planting Kayongogo maize. Why is that? The maize is already coated with the, a striga resistant chemical. So you don't have to spray once you plant the striga resistant maize. Is that it? This is the striga resistant maize. It's called Longe 7 IR. Locally we call it Kayongogo. Once you plant this, you don't expect uh, any striga. How do I plant it? Do I plant it locally? Like I've been planting this one? With Kayongogo maize, uh, the agronomic practices might be the same. Mm. What differs might be at planting time. Uh, this maize is coated with uh, the Mizapa chemical. Mm -hmm. It's a very dangerous chemical to your life. So we advise that while planting it, you need to put on gloves. And the moment you open this container, make sure that you plant all the maize inside here. You don't leave some for planting the following day. This maize sounds like a winning idea. If Paul plants this maize, and his neighbors also plant it, the striker in the village will die. To plant this IR maize, you need gloves to protect your hands against the chemical on the seeds. Follow the instructions of the packet and also remember to use the right fertilizers recommended by the soil test. After preparing the field, make rows 75 centimeters apart and planting holes 60 centimeters apart on each row. Mix planting fertilizer and manure with soil in each hole. Add two seeds and cover with soil. When you have planted all the seeds in the packet, you must destroy the packet and wash your hands very well. Do not touch other seeds with your hands after handling the IR maize seed. We shall see you after the break. Coming up. The couple learns about a particular fruit they can grow.
To receive all Shamba Shepherd leaflets, SMS the word ALL with your name and address to 30606. If you'd like to receive just a leaflet for this farm, SMS Farmer, that's the name of the farmer, with your name and address to 30606. Welcome back to Shamba Shepherd. We are still here in Amungalue village in Iganga district. And we're still shaping up Robina and Paul. So far we've had their soil tested, advised them on vaccination for their chickens, and given them a solution to their striker problem. Walking around the Shamba, I notice they have a lot of different types of fruit trees. Maybe Shamba Shepherd can introduce to them one more type of fruit tree. Apples. Uh, Paul and Robina, I notice you have many fruit trees. I notice you have mangoes, you have oranges. Yep. Um, I didn't notice any apples. So what do you think about apples? Have you ever thought about planting them? No, in Uganda here, literature says that apples grow in the cold environment. So we right. expect them in Kavale, uh -huh. maybe in the Kapchorwa, where the temperatures are low, so we have not been thinking about apples. Because uh -huh. we are in a hot environment. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, John, yes, what do you right. say to that? Well, we have brought the tropical apple trees that grow in the hot, warm climate. Oh. So they so can grow here? They can grow here nicely, uh, in the hottest part that you would think about in Uganda. Why? Because we are bringing them from California, Southern California, which is hotter than any hottest part that you would think about in Uganda, including Kalamoja. Really? So mm -hmm. These ones can grow naturally in any part of Uganda, including even Kabale, where I think it is cold, because it is within the tropics, in the warm, hot climate. And what do you have for us? We have brought uh, for you, you here in Uganda the varieties in terms of scions, which we shall use to graft. Right, eh? okay. We'll pull out the second one, right, deep in there, huh? right, and, and so on. So, those are science, which are the second part of the apple plant. Mm -hmm. Then, right here, we have the rootstock, the apple tree, which we have brought for the warm, hot climate. Kaffa Creek apple nursery is based on two plants or two parents one, the top, which is the scion and two, the rootstock. So these two are going to make the apple plant. Okay. Basically the top is the variety and the bottom is the rootstock. I would then go through the grafting, which is the process of joining. These can join and then eventually we can plant. I will get this knife, right? So I'll cut here using this uh, cutter. Here, I will open it and cut off this bit here, which is not useful. Get it off. All right. Then after that, I'll get my knife, this one here, huh? and uh, what will I do? I'll sharpen. And how do I sharpen? I don't sharpen like this. I sharpen away from me, from my body. And the expert went on to explain. Take the root stalk and split down in the middle. Then take the scion, cut it, and sharpen it to a point, making the long smooth cuts that are straight on the sides. Then open the rootstock and slide the scion in on the outside, making sure that the two cambium layers are touching each other. Then take your plastic tape and wrap the graft. Once you have joined the two, you need to plant the tree in good soil with fertilizer and plenty of water. The apple tree will grow well as the rootstock is strong and likes the soil here and the scion will be the apple variety. Good varieties for this area are Anna from Carfell Creek. Paul has five cows and is very keen to improve his breed. So, we invited an expert from Coopers to give him advice on how to go about it. My intention is to get one cow, because now you get little milk from the many cows, but you can get one cow and the milk, you get 20 liters. Uh -huh. And even the goats, I'm going to sell all those things, what I can make 
the zero grazing unit mm -hmm. yes. with the, my intention is to get biogas and milk mm -hmm. you sell the milk you maintain the family and you get even nutrition mm -hmm. let's see mr yeah. bet is it advisable what he's planning to do quite advisable that is the direction to go and very good because this coming from the farmer keep fewer cows higher production our parcels of land are always getting smaller yes. smaller because people are becoming more but the land size is not increasing increasing so what we want is the small parcel that we have we maximize on that one grow food for the cow and so that we can have sufficient feed for that cow zero grazing that is the best way to go keep the cow in a zero grazing unit then use the, the rest of the field to grow pasture. pasture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But very important is now the kind of cow that you're going to keep. Yeah. Um, a very good Frisian cow would be very advisable because this is a place where you have, I think, plenty of pasture because of good rains. Mm -hmm. You being the farmer, so the management is by yourself. Very important would be establishing a zero grazing unit and now where to source the good cow. And thirdly, the management of that cow. One of the things which are very important will be the structure of the dairy unit. Yeah. The other important thing will be the inputs. The sourcing of the inputs, the products, the drugs that you are going to use, and the feeds. Yeah. A lot of the feeds would be very important that you grow them in the farm so that you reduce the cost of feeding. feeding because that is a very big cost to the farm. But we are going to give you supplements Mm -hmm. We are going to give you products to manage conditions of the cow, okay. which includes managing ticks, because even a zero grazing cow can get ticks, can get ticks because you are bringing pasture from outside. We must deworm our cow every, every three months. Um, so those are very important things. We need to manage the udder of the cow. We need to serve insemination, breeding of the cow. Mm -hmm. Those are the things which are critical. Uh, you must have water and feed. So where does he get a good breed from? We are going to help him to, to identify the farms where they can get good sources of cows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the best would be, yeah, if he starts by, if he gets a good cow which is a little milky, well and good. If he brings in an in calf heifer, that will be good, so long as we are sure it's coming from a place clean from diseases. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, we'll work with the veterinary department who give us the movement permit to move the cow from one place to another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, at the farm where he's getting the, fa the cow, the cow should have, at least there should be some records of, in that farm to show the breeding records of that cow. Yes. So that he has a rough idea of what is the expected production of this cow I'm bringing to my farm. Yes. So there must be records in the farm you're getting from. Mm. The history of breeding in that farm, the disease history in that farm. Mm -hmm. um, before you bring the cow, you go, will go with a veterinary That's doctor right. yeah. to examine the cow, whether the cow is in calf, free from diseases. Having moved to a new home, they still have challenges. So I went to talk to Robina to find out what problems she's having. The challenges I have, mm -hmm. I must cook very early before darkness so that I can get something to eat. Why? Because I don't have the light. So what do you use normally? I use the torches with batteries. Okay, so mm -hmm. now I have some good news and I have something really nice to show you. Yes. This is a lamp eh? that uses solar energy. The D-Light D20 home solar system is a personal grid for your home or business. This kit includes a solar panel, mobile charging battery pack, two solar lights, two light switches, and a portable lantern. The battery lasts up to 7 to 34 hours. The brightness is eight times brighter than kerosene lamp. And there's a portable lantern included with the system. And a charger for your mobile charging. Oh, wow! <laughs> <laughs> so Shabba, Well, Paul and Rubina, we've come to the end of our, year, our stay here in Yoshamba. We've really enjoyed it, and I hope you've also learned a lot. Have you? In fact, we have learned a lot, and we have appreciated hoping that you come back again. <laughs> and by the time we come back again, you find this home 
changed and to be shaped up as the name spells. Yes. yes. Shamba shape up. Yes. So when you shamba shape up the shamba, even the home will be what? Shape up. up. Because now we have been getting little <laughs> income, but now I expect that within maybe six months, just six months, yes. we shall have raised our income. It's been another exciting Shamba Shape Up in Uganda and we hope to have given Paul and Robina all the tips to become better and more productive farmers. We've covered so much and if you are like me, you may not remember it all. Weather, diseases, new crops, type of crops, cows, goats, chickens, markets, and so much more. Shamba Shape Up has a service to help you. So, you don't have to remember everything. It is called the iShamba and it can send information to help you know what to do on your farm and when to plant. You can even call and talk to an expert if you get really stuck. Just send an SMS with the word JOIN to 21606. And you can shape yourself up anytime and anywhere. Shamba Shape Up is online. To learn more about today's topics, or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashapeup.com, select the episode, and click play. You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shape Up, to get more information, get involved in discussions, and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter, at Shamba Shape Up, or simply text 30606.